friends, and welcome to mm, partly sunny Seattle. Uh, if you haven't been paying attention, I actually live here in the state of Washington in the USA now, and uh, it's crazy to me that I get to say that. But we are in Seattle today, and we're gonna just take a little look around and see uh, a few of the kind of random things that this city has to offer. Um, we won't be looking at like Space Needle or Pike's Place or any of these well-known tourist things, uh, but just a few things that I see on my travels. So first stop today is gonna be a place called Veretta Park, which is uh, right next to the house of one of Seattle's most famous residents, at least in the music scene, uh, Kurt Cobain, who lived right by this park. So let's go check it out. This is Veretta Park. Pretty tiny little park, all things considered, just off the side of a road. April 5th, 1994, Kurt Cobain, um, famous musician, uh, in a famous band called Nirvana, took his own life um, at the house where he was living. And it's just up there. This is kind of crazy, a piece of music history. I can only imagine that maybe in the time that he lived here, Kurt came to this park a few times. Maybe even wrote some songs here. Uh, he's clearly a troubled guy. So maybe this place helped him clear his head a little bit. Even with all the loud tree surgery going on. Now fans have turned this park into a bit of an unofficial memorial to uh, Kurt. Which is kind of eerie given that he met his demise only a few yards from this place. On April 8th, 1994, a guy who'd come to install a security system at this house found Kurt Cobain's body. Crazy to think it was just up here. This morning, an electrician went to Cobain's suburban Seattle home to do some work, looked in a window over the garage, and saw a body. Plenty of people think that the whole grunge movement was just like a collection of bands that happened to sound similar and all happened to come from this area. And they're probably right, but Nirvana were a real shake-up to a lot of the music industry. They were singing songs um, that on the front of it sounded really offensive, but really all they wanted was for everyone to be loved and accepted. Um, and the people that really dive deep into the songs know that and know how huge a force people like Kurt Cobain were for, um, you know, equality and you know, treating everyone how you want it to be treated, which is kind of nice. So we've stopped at another park here in Seattle called Volunteer Park. It's right by the uh, Museum of, I think it's Asian Art. Um, and I'm starting to realize that this video is gonna have a slight theme, although this one is possibly a little disconnected, um, of talented people from the area who were taken before their time. And um, this is kind of tenuous, but in this park, there's a sculpture made in 1969 called Black Sun. Uh, and in the days after, the uh, Soundgarden frontman Chris Cornell's passing, this kind of became a bit of an unofficial memorial to him. Who knows if he had this in his head when he wrote the famous track Black Hole Sun, 
but um, it's a pretty cool piece of art and nice that people had somewhere to go and share their sadness together. I also love that if you line it up just right, there's that peeking through there. Ooh. I actually just realized another possible link. Uh, band Death Cab for Cutie, who are originally from Bellingham, north of Seattle, but have always kind of been considered a Seattle band, had a song on, I think, the last but one album, Kintsugi, or maybe it was the one after that, called Black Sun. So, a bonus link to Seattle, possibly from that cool artwork. Pretty massive water tower going up. I should probably mention that I have a weird phobia of large things especially large things in enclosed spaces, so this is kind of tricky for me. Some pretty great views from up here. Even all the way out to Mount Rainier. <laughs> and of course, the beautiful Seattle city skyline. Seaplane coming in. Watch out for the Space Needle! Well, that was a fun break from all the death. Ready for some more? I promise this one's gonna be good. We are now at Lakeview Cemetery in Seattle. Um, there's probably a fair few notable graves here, but the one I've come to see, well, ones I should probably say, um, belong to the incredibly famous martial arts actor, Bruce Lee, who uh, died tragically and suddenly, um, I think it was a reaction to a painkiller that he was on, and um, yeah, it was really, it was a really sad event. Bruce came here to Seattle to study at university and kind of called this place his home, I think. And so when he tragically passed away, it was decided that he would be buried here. One of the biggest tragedies about this is that Bruce's son, Brandon, who was had also become a famous actor in his own right, was tragically killed during an on-set accident uh, during the filming of the movie The Crow. Um, a mistake with a prop gun left him mortally wounded and he also passed away and was buried here in the plot next to his dad that uh, Bruce's wife, Linda, had intended to be for her. It's really sad. When I told you today's video was gonna have a bit of a somber theme, I really meant it. 
we're gonna visit another resting place of a very famous and talented artist. And it's right here. Another Seattle native was a guy called James Marshall Hendricks, otherwise known to his friends as Jimmy. Jimmy's career uh, saw him become what many would argue to be one of the world's greatest electric guitar players of all time. Like Kurt Cobain, he is unfortunately a member of the 27 Club. He died from an accidental uh, drug overdose um, at the young age of 27 back in 1970. I often hear people talking about how most of uh, Jimi Hendrix's success came from playing with bands in clubs in the UK. Pretty sure he moved to London for a time and played with lots of the really great bands. Bands like The Animals, um, and it was in fact in London where he unfortunately met his untimely demise. Jimi Hendrix and Kurt Cobain kind of share a lot of similarities, both from Seattle, or these areas, uh, both guitarists, both left-handed guitarists, both died at 27. It's a strange coincidence. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that's quite enough fun for one video. Uh, thanks very much for joining me, and keep it tuned to this channel for more fun-filled, non-death-related videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time.